So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pasolo from Curval.com and in today's video I'm going to show you a small trick that will allow you to help your web connector see tables better than it is doing today, okay? So that will happen in a second, stay tuned. Okay, so have you tried the new web connector? It is absolutely amazing, right? I don't know if you've seen the video uh, I did two weeks ago demonstrating how that works. You probably saw that some of the websites I tried, it didn't really work that well. You know, the M script or M code could not actually see the tables behind. And uh, I got contacted by a developer from Microsoft that said, okay, I saw that you were having some issues with this connector. How about you do this and that and see if that helps you. And it actually did. So I'm actually going to show you what he told me and hopefully that will solve your issues too. Also, Miguel Escobar has done a fantastic blog post about how this connector works in depth. I really recommend you to watch that or to read that after you watch this uh, video. Link below. Let's go and see how that trick works and I'll see you again at the end. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get this table from the federal government in Power BI. So here we have a new file, get data, web, paste. Then now it's loading the HTML code. And we get this extract table using examples. And here we have the website preview, which is absolutely fantastic, actually. And now here we have the table that we want to download. And if you remember the video, you pick sample text and you give it to, you feed it to the to the table and it should give you back this table. It doesn't give it to you. It says no CSS selector was found. And uh, um, this uh, person from Microsoft contacted me and said, okay, there is a way around it. And this is to use this wait for function for, web for the web browser content um, function. And you can do wait for duration. So that means allowed the HTML code to load for, in this case, is 10 seconds, or just wait for a specific part of the HTML code to load before you actually grab the HTML code. So this is basically what it's doing. It says, wait for this part of the HTML code to appear before you actually grab the HTML code. Super easy. Uh, it says there is a, a bug that causes the web page preview not to render. Uh, I couldn't, I mean, for me, it rendered. I'll show you in a second. So let's go back to Power BI and do some of this. You're going to have, well, let's do it. I'll show you. Okay, so here, first of all, there is one issue. Um, I would actually like to be able to grab the code that Power Query has already done to do this. Uh, I would like to click OK and give me an empty table or give me whatever I just wrote here. You can't do that which is well, not ideal, especially if you're a beginner. And this is what you would do if you're a beginner. So I, I need to give this feedback to Microsoft that they actually um, allows you to load the code anyhow. Now I have to click cancel and nothing gets loaded. If I go to edit queries, everything is blank. So then I need to know exactly what to write. And Miguel Escobar has done a fantastic blog post around the new web connector where he explains everything in detail. It goes through an example, but then it goes to the nitty and grit of the actual code. So what is going, what's happening? He's doing a web browser contents and then HTML table. Uh, and then he's talking about the wait for connector that he had problems, but they have fixed because the the documentation is wrong. So if you go and see this on the web connector documentation, it will be wrong. Just make a note of that. And then he explains also how to grab the, the different parts of the HTML code. You need to know a little bit of 
how HTML works. So perhaps that's not ideal if you're a beginner. Very, very good. So you could actually grab this code and then uh, change change it so you can actually cap you know instead of writing everything from the beginning uh, you get help from power query hopefully in future releases we will be able to push okay even if nothing was found so we can keep the code what i did is i have this world of tanks you know on the video two weeks ago last week i actually had an example that loaded it was a world of tanks is here and here I just need to prove the credentials, which is anonymous. But I have here all the code I needed. So what we're going to do is actually, we're going to do an ugly tick. We're going to duplicate these so I can reuse the code. And here on the source, I'm going to change this one with the federal government. Site. I mean, it's not ideal by all means, but hey, <laughs> it works. And I'm going to use the time function. He's giving me here for the government, you could have data tables, paginate, but you need to know HTML to know what should you wait for on the HTML code. So it actually works with direction two. So why not use that? We go in there. Wait for, I don't know if 30 seconds, 10 seconds is enough. Well, we'll try, why not? And now you need to click on this gear. Extract table from HTML. Of course, it's going to give me the table that I wrote for the world of tanks, but we can change that. Candidate. And now we can scroll. You see, I can see the the web. I don't know why he couldn't. But if you don't, maybe, then now you know that sometimes maybe you can't see it. I, I was able to see it anyhow. So we have one. Here we have another one. Be careful because as you can see, this is jumping Carlson. Here it is. So you need to feed it a little bit more before it actually gets the right order. Cruise calls on. Now it's correct, okay? And now here we go. And this is the party. And we have the Democratic Party. So and now here we have the table. It's actually working, something that it didn't work before with the wait for um, the code added. It just works very, very well, which I think is fantastic. Now, another thing that I was asked a thousand times on the previous video. Uh, if we go here to the US site, you will see that it's paginated. What it means is that it's not showing you all the records is only showing you 10 results per page. You can change that here, but what happens if you want to download all those records at once? Well, here's the thing. I actually tried, I say, okay, show me 25 records. So Furina is number 10, and then we have this guy. Uh, if we go back to Power BI, we delete this, and I'll show you why I have to delete it. So here we have candidate. Let's load a little bit more. This is the next guy. He's thinking. So look at this. It actually managed to download everything. Let me tell you. Is not going to do that for all websites. It just did it for this probably because the way it was built, but it won't work with all websites. Pagination, you have to do it in, as I show you in another video, I will link uh, here down below so you can see it. Uh, but in this case, it actually works. So what you can do is you, you can go ahead and try it and see if it will give you all the results. There is a but, 
because yes, it did run, download it 1,785. But if we put now the second, which is was, yeah. So it says you have reached the maximum size of the table. So I ask uh, Microsoft and they say that they have a limit of 3,000 rows for now. I don't know if they are going to remove the limit, uh, but as for now, you can only download 3,000 records. So it won't allow you to add anything more because if we would add the next column, it will be over 3,000. Okay, so it's just telling you, sorry, no, you can't do it. Uh, so if you want to have more than 3,000 records, which I guess you do, make sure you give that feedback to Microsoft. And talking about feedback, he was actually commenting that he saw, uh, he read the comments on the video that I did and uh, he said, I tried it, but it didn't work for me. And he asked me if I could, um, you know, either encourage you to give more details on the channel or just go to the Power BI community and uh, leave the feedback there. And I highly recommend you to do that. I mean, there's not a lot that I will be able to do for you guys, but uh, if you go to the Power BI community and leave the feedback and say exactly what's not working, if there is a bug, they will fix it. If there is new functionality that needs to be added, they'll know about it. So it is just a win-win for all of us to, to just give them feedback. So make sure you do. If you do something that is not working with this web connector, they are actively listening on the YouTube channel. They are now following, I guess, the video I did. So if you have any issues, just leave explicit details on what the issues are, okay? Okay, so as you can see, we can now access the tables from the website, at least one of the websites that uh, we couldn't before, which is a great news. If you're having the same problems, go ahead and try that too. When it comes to pagination, you know, when um, the website is, has structured the data in different pages, so you have to click one, two, three on the website, um, there is actually another method for doing that. This current method that they release now does not support it. Even if we could do it in our sample, it's not supported, so you won't be able to do it with everybody, with every website. But uh, make sure you check the video below where I show you how to do it with functions, okay? You still have to do it that way for now. But uh, yeah, that's all. Have a great evening and I'll see you again on Wednesday. Bye.